Hey, welcome back to the Sixth Gear Garage. Today I'll show you how to disassemble a truck door with crank windows and manual locks. These were on an 85 Toyota Extra Cab back in the day and sat in a barn for like 10 years or so. It's nice and disgusting now. I'm gonna show how to clean up and restore the door panels in a future video. But right now, I'm gonna strip this entire door down to the bare shell because these were on a trail rig and they're kind of banged up. Somebody wants them for a project, so I'll keep all the good parts for another truck. Start with the number two Phillips on this trim screw. Pops right out. This armrest has the plastic plugs. I need a couple of picks to pull the plug. A screwdriver is too big. You need two picks to get even prying force on both sides. That's far enough with those. Now I've got some plastic trim tools. I don't want to damage anything with those picks. Suckers in there tight. A lot of them don't have the plugs, just uh, open screw holes. There we go. Toyota did not want this to come out. And then I repeated the steps for the other plug. Now I can get to these Phillips head screws. Oh wow, look how blue these used to be. I've got a pick again, and there's a little metal clip back here. Pull up, make sure not to stab the door panel. Whoa, here's the clip, and it just goes on between the crank and the spacer. There's a little groove, and that keeps it from getting lost. Now it's time to take the panel off. And for that, I have some panel poppers. These you squeeze, these you pry. I feel like squeezing today. Find the plastic clip. There's another. The floor is in the way, so the prying one works down here. That sounded like breaking plastic. Once you release the sides and the bottom, this will lift right up. Now I can lift this up over the push lock. This came up really easy. Sometimes there's some stubborn clips in there that need a push from a trim tool. Here's the back of the panel. It was held in by this long metal backed strip here. There's some holes in the door here. And that's where the clips are on the door panels of the less equipped trucks. Like the flimsy ones that don't cover the entire door. This one's nice. It's actually metal at the top. All this plastic has to come off. Get this handle out of the way first. Once you get those two screws out, the handle can move out here. Now I can pull this plastic sheet off. I'll show how to remove the lock cylinder first. On the inside of the door, it's held in place by this big metal clip. And it comes right out with some vice grips. Now the cylinder is free to go out through the hole. Except for this plastic clip. And that just releases from the rod. Once that's off, the lock is free to go. That's all it is. Too bad I don't have a key for it. Anyone want this? There's another plastic clip on the rod for the handle. I'll pry this one a little with a pick. Handle is out of the way. All right, let's see how removing the exterior handle goes. This plastic plug needs to come out to get access to a bolt inside the door. All right, inside there's a 10 millimeter bolt there and a 10 millimeter bolt there. On this big rod here, there's another plastic clip. This one's tight. I'm gonna need two hands here. Now, I need to pull the rod through the end of the handle toward me. These are pretty tight. All right, looking through the access hole here, you can see what's going on. The end of the rod is mushroomed, and that's why it's hard to pull out of the clip. I soaked it with some PB, so uh, let's give it a minute and start on something else. That 10 millimeter bolt I just loosened held this metal cover piece in place right there. 
the three Phillips screws held the latch assembly, which isn't quite ready to come out yet. Pull this up and twist it off. This clip is still giving me trouble, so I pulled it through to try getting it from the outside. Nope. All right, this is a stubborn one. You guys get to see me struggle on this one. I'm spreading the end of the plastic clip with some very fine needle nose. And that was enough clearance to get the rod through. I had to work for this one. Now with all the rods disconnected, I can pull out the entire lock assembly. They're left and right specific, so mark them with an L or an R if you're gonna have them both sitting around. Same for the handles. Next, it's time to roll down the window. Too far. And loosen these 10 millimeter bolts. Now go all the way down. Pull up this weather strip trim to get to the Phillips head screws. And remove all three. I unbolted the regulator so everything's loose now. And there's the regulator. Teeth are in nice shape. Here's a better look at all those holes that normally have clips holding the rubber felt trim at the top of the door panel. On the other side, we have three of these plastic clips holding the outside trim. These are easy to break. There's one center tab in the back that you have to push away and then pull the two front tabs forward and then the clip can slide up. I need two hands for these guys. Here's a better look at the clip. That back part that hangs down was down inside the hole. This last 10 millimeter bolt that I didn't get yet is for the frame of the vent window. I'll pull the window channel out. They can shrink and crack on the corners and ends. This one's pretty dry. As of 2020 though, you can still get these new from Toyota. Now it's time for the vent window. There's a bracket on the frame, so you have to turn it 90 degrees. Then it comes right out. Nice condition, she's a keeper. And with that out of the way, I can pull out the glass. And that's it. Hey, I also have the doors left from my red 87 four-wheel drive. It had power windows and locks, along with full-size windows. Let me know if you want me to do another tutorial with that door, since some of the steps are different. Thanks for watching. And uh, check out my store. I've got some rad Yoda gear that you might like.